So we're here at the Salt Springs Park, just outside of Montrose, or wherever the heck we are, for a snake show. And this park has taken the heavies from the Pennsylvania floods. There's a ton of damage around here, which we'll go look at. But first, the snake show. This building was the uh, Wheaton Homestead, circa 1842. They must have had the place all to themselves. It's been Probably sort of... still a few Indians around somewhere. Yeah, not many. We're the only state park that's not run by the state. And say, what is that about? But like 23 years ago, the state didn't have money for this place, and they were just going to say, ah, forget it. Um, we don't need to keep it. And people in the community actually formed a nonprofit organization. And so it comes to six programs or two with you know your whole family, and it pays for itself. But we really appreciate your support. And this morning, John and Elsie feelings about snakes. So anyway, so welcome. Thanks again, guys, for being here with your live samples. <laughs> and I uh, hope you got enjoyed. You either love them or you hate them. Hardly anybody is neutral on snakes. They kind of make your hair stand on end, even that happens to me. If, I, if a snake surprises me, or I'm poking around a wood pile and there's a snake, <laughs> oh, it's like I can feel the shivers, you know, but I mean, I'm, I've always been fascinated by snakes and wanted to learn more about them, and they're really not a threat, even in venomous snake country, if you know your snakes, and you're careful where you put your feet, they're not going to chase you, they're not going to bite you, and a lot of people swear they've been chased by snakes, but I kind of doubt it, they were probably between a snake and its hole in the ground, and the snake wanted to get away, and if you stand still, even a rattlesnake will just crawl right by and go mind its own business. Timber rattlesnakes are much more common as you go down the coastal plain and all the way down through the Carolinas and into Florida. Timber rattlesnakes are pretty prevalent. Here, they do exist in Susquehanna County, but they're only in certain specific spots that are favorable. Because we were glaciated at one time, most of the snakes were driven out, and as the climate warmed after the glaciers left, some of the snakes have moved back in. So what you're saying is there are some areas in Susquehanna County that copperheads do exist? No, not copperheads. Not, not copperheads. Yeah, I feel like but a one. if we all live 200 years, there may eventually sure, be sure. copperheads okay. here because where they're found is in river valleys down um, to the southeastern okay. the Ohio so River Valley. Old. So we don't have copperheads in this area right now. <laughs> These Snakes, however, are very small. I'm glad I have that picture because these don't look these don't look a lot like what's in the picture. The smaller snake of the two in this box, and I'll pass this around. The smaller snake is, is the young of this year. It was probably garter snakes have lives, babies. Yes. My son just caught one about a month ago. We had babies in our backyard, and we counted about 18. Wow. wow. And Still a little bit frozen, but one of the, it ruptured her abdomen. And one yeah. This is a roadkill snake. I checked her to make sure the baby really? was still alive. John, I didn't see that. There's one, oh, no. there's one of the little live babies that was inside. Wow. Yeah. Let's see that. I'm wow. Has around. Has everybody road. seen live snakes this summer? But this there doesn't so, seem to be many, very many. So we have many. nice lawn with night crawlers. You go out there just about dusk in the summertime, there's a chance you might see garter snakes mm -hmm. looking for night crawlers to snatch. Or garter snakes live under tarps in places where worms come up. You can see the red belly, which is the distinctive feature of this snake. And that's about a half grown. That's almost... Well, there he is. But snakes also, many of them, especially a ribbon snake, is more of a scythe hunter. Yeah. Yes. Adult size. Mm -hmm. like, next year, that snake might be mature and able to reproduce. They don't get very long, not that long. The females are a little larger and a little heavier, but no longer than, no bigger than a pencil, really. You can find little mouth snakes maybe this long, smaller around than your pinky. Even narrower than a pencil. I mean, they're quite small. What they eat when they're young is almost anybody's guess. I think they eat probably baby garter snakes, and they can eat little tiny pink mice if they can find a mouse nest. And they kind of stick on you because snakes have 
teeth that are designed, they're like fish teeth. They're designed for grabbing something and holding on. Mm -hmm. So they're pointed toward the back of their throat, and they're needle sharp, and they're both on top and the bottom. They have four rows on the top and two rows on the bottom. And the ones in front are usually longer for holding on and catching a prey. And even if they get a little bite on a fish or something, they got it. And they won't let go until they get it positioned in their mouth and swallow it whole. He's black. And unfortunately, my containers are black. <laughs> I'm going to get, get him on top of the white. Oh, just take oh. him out and hand him around. Well, he's too small to take out. He's just a <laughs> tiny little thing. You can see him down here in the corner. And the little yellow oh, ring. look at that. He's his, beautiful. His belly is an orange or a red. His belly is an orange or red. If you can flip it and get him to crawl on the... And I showed it to the dog. I had him on a leash. <laughs> and the snake reared back. And it got all excited. It was vibrating his tail and striking at the dog. So the dog stood back. Then he started barking. And each time the dog barked, that snake jumped just like that. So he, although he wasn't hearing like you normally think, that bark was loud enough, enough vibration in this, that he could sense the vibration of the bark. So they do, in a way, hear. And the same way with footsteps, they can, they can feel. If you notice, the snapping you turtle baby. Scanning, you'll sometimes see snappers on the road. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a sunny place to dig and, and make a nest. And when those babies hatch, it's usually quite away from water. Those babies... And he has to be defensive all the time. I'm not going to put my finger right in front of him. But they, have, they don't have teeth, they have a beak. But the other turtle that I saw this year, right on one of the roads right outside of Montrose, going through the woods, was a wood turtle. So I first glanced down and saw this part. I thought he, I thought he had a wood turtle, but um, wood turtle has this gorgeous, stop pushing on me. <laughs> wood turtle has Maybe we'll, if there's no other questions, we'll adjourn outside a little. And you can just fold up your chair. That would be really helpful. Archer, yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Elsie's holding husband court here. caught one a few years back and, and just kept it for a day or so, and it had babies that yeah. second day. I think second he day. Sent, it, sent her into labor, actually. <laughs> I saw a big snake on her. Right. He's alive. He's Sorry I'm not warmer for you. I saw a big snake Whoa. on Route 706 he going doesn't to like Montrose that. yesterday. Doesn't want to be I, I drove over him without hitting him and it came to a screeching halt. <laughs> I should so just keep putting one hand, like let them walk from one hand to another. Wow, you are fast. That's another thing about it. When you well, put the nice snake up, if you don't like want you. him to bite you, a wild snake, just let him crawl across your hands. If you grasp him, especially behind the neck, he's going to turn around and bite you because he'll feel like threatened, like you're Anybody trying to else? eat him. And don't hold him, as I said before. And they're dry, the they're not slimy. Face. Can just I let a snake him? crawl sure. through your hands, and pretty soon they'll tame right down. This is There was a big flood here in Pennsylvania recently, and it came here to northeastern Pennsylvania, here at Salt Spring Park, and this house had its uh, septic and water supply cut off, and the creek here that comes flowing through here just ripped through here. That barn over there has been moved about four or five feet. Took the heavies. You can see just to the left of the center there, there was a uh, footing for a, looks like a bridge. Gone. And they've been slowly replanting the grass here and actually being somewhat successful with it. But that's what happens when all the water gets sent down the, down the way here. This was a picnic area, and now it's a rocky boulder field. Have you ever seen a log? Oh, there he is, John Bruner, the snake man. And rewarded with his banana cake for all his fine efforts. And that's the story from Salt Springs Park. So here at Salt Springs, there's a lot of high water marks from various disasters and very likely the last payphone on Earth. How about that? <laughs>